said if these do not praise me the rocks will cry William Barclay said this about our text the scene is the courtyard of the house of Simon the Pharisee the house of the well to do people were built round an open courtyard in the form of a hollow square. So the open courtyard would be in the middle and the houses were built around it. So Jesus is at the house of Simon the Pharisee and Simon is well to do. He's doing quite well. And, um, and, and often... In the courtyard, there would be a garden and a fountain. I want you to see this. And there in the warm weather, meals would be eaten. So there's this beautiful garden, beautiful table, fountain, surrounded by this wonderful house. And there sits Jesus at Simon's house, at Simon's uh, uh, invitation, in this well-watered, uh, beautiful garden, and everything's nice, and they're having a meal in the warm Palestinian weather. It was the custom that when a rabbi was at a meal in such a house, all kinds of people actually were free to come in and to visit. They were free to uh, come and go as they please. Amen. They were quite free to listen to the pearls of wisdom that would fall from the rabbi's lips. So if the word was out that a rabbi was in town, people of all stripes would drop in and sit and listen to the conversation because the rabbi's lips had wisdom. Are you with me? The fact that this was allowed explains how this woman got in there. See, because you would have to wonder if Jesus is invited to the lady, to the man's house, and he's his dinner guest, where did this woman come from? It was the custom, customs of the time. So people would come and people would go pretty much as they please. So there is Simon the Pharisee. We know that uh, Luke was there because he records it. Uh, the disciples were with him, and they're at uh, Simon's house, and among the attendees comes this woman. Are you with me? When a guest entered such a house, three things were always done, all right? Three things that were never omitted when a guest came. Number one, the guest was given the guest of honor. Now, not the people who would drop in, but the guest of honor. Number one, he was given uh, a kiss of peace, which was a, a mark of respect. Okay, um, which um, Barclay says was never omitted, never omitted when your guest was a distinguished rabbi, which is exactly uh, what Jesus was. He was the son of God, but he was also a rabbi and a rather distinguished rabbi. For by now, 
uh, his fame had spread abroad and, and the word had gotten out about this young Galilean who was different from even the other rabbis for he had power that they did not have. He had a doctrine that they did not have and he claimed to be someone that none of the other rabbis claimed to be. Talk was out that this rabbi was the Christ. That this rabbi was quite possibly uh, the Messiah that we'd been waiting for. So this rabbi is a distinguished rabbi even amongst his peers. So quite naturally, if you would invite him uh, to your home, and if he would be so gracious as to consent to come, you would most certainly uh, give him the honor and the respect that is due him. One of the things would be the kiss of peace. Uh, the roads during biblical times, for the most part, were dusty tracks and the shoes were mere soles that were held in place by leather straps. So the shoes in biblical times were a far cry from what we wear today. Even our sandals are superior to what they wore then. So because the roads were dusty tracks and the shoes were just sandals, uh, soles uh, uh, placed on the feet and held together by, stri uh, by, by uh, straps, then uh, for every distinguished guest, cold water would be provided. Cold water would be provided to, uh, to wash their feet and also to soothe their feet so that they would comfort uh, the distinguished guests. And lastly, either a pinch of sweet-smelling incense or burnt, uh, was burned or a drop of attar of rose was placed on the guest's head and they would be anointed with these things as a show of respect. So that would be the greeting, the kiss. That would be the cold water for to cleanse the feet and to comfort them. And the incense, the anointing of the guest's head. In the case of our text, none of these things were done. Verse 36, as I read it, I underscore to you that Jesus was there because he was invited. It was not the Lord's idea. The Lord didn't crash Simon's house. You want to be hospitable, hospitable even if you're crashed, but you certainly want to be nice to people uh, to whom you've invited have you ever been invited to someone's home and they didn't extend to you the courtesies that um, are generally extended? Uh, you, you knew while you were there that if you could just get out, if I could just, just leave here, that, that would be it. I'm not, I'm not coming back. Uh, or you at least you would at least ask yourself, why did they invite me? Why? I mean, you, you didn't have to. You don't have to invite anyone to your house. It, it, that you don't want to come to your house, but most certainly if you invite someone, you don't want to invite them and then not be courteous and not be hospitable. You certainly don't want to invite someone and be hostile. This man invited Jesus. The Bible says he, he desired that he would come and have dinner. And Jesus consented. Now, the question is, since Simon was a Pharisee, you don't mind if I laid his foundation. Since he was a Pharisee, why did he invite Jesus to his house at all? Um, why ask this young Galilean rabbi to come to your house? I want to explore, there are many possibilities, but I want to just explore three. It 
it is just possible that perhaps Simon was an admirer or a sympathizer of Jesus. Not all Pharisees uh, were Jesus' enemy. Luke 13 and 31 says, And the same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, speaking of Jesus, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. So there were some Pharisees who were friendly to the cause of Christ and, and who were kind to him. But the whole atmosphere of discourtesy disclaims this possibility. It's unlikely that Simon was an admirer because Simon was discourteous. There's something wrong with you that the way your admiration of a person is manifested is when it's manifested by disrespect. Or you will show me that you appreciate me by being discourteous. What's wrong with you? There's something wrong with someone who would do that. So let's 86 that one. So he, I think it's safe to say that he was not a sympathizer, nor was he was, was he an admirer of our Lord. Another possibility is that it could be that Simon had invited Jesus with the deliberate intention of enticing him to some word or action which might have made uh, the basis uh, to bring charges against our Lord. Simon may have been a, a, a agent, an agent provocateur. Perhaps that's what he wanted to do, to provoke our Lord into some action or into saying something that our Lord should not have said so as to bring charges. But in verse 40, he refers to our Lord as a rabbi. King James says, master. Our Lord said to him, I have somewhat to say to thee. And he said, rabbi, or King James says, master, say on. So uh, perhaps he didn't invite Jesus over to try and provoke this rabbi. The third one that I wish to um, explore, and there may be many, you may have your own. Simon was, as have been submitted, a collector of celebrities. Amen. And with a half patronizing contempt. He patronized our Lord. He had invited him. He invited this startling young Galilean to a meal. Perhaps he had very little respect from day one. But he invited him to come and uh, that he would have a meal with him because by now Jesus had developed a name and Simon wanted to be able to say I had him at my house that would best explain I think the strange combination of a certain respect that was given with the omission of the usual courtesies. He gave him some respect, but he didn't give him the courtesies that he demanded. So perhaps uh, in a patronizing way, he had this young budding rabbi over but that at the same time, Simon invited him over to patronize, or better, patronize Jesus. To patronize is to treat as inferior. So perhaps he, brought, he invited him over to take him down a notch. 
everybody's talking about you and who you are. Well, I'm going to show you that you're not all of that. People do that to you, you know. All of us have been subject to that. Sometimes people try to take you down a notch by the disrespect of their tone. Oh, yeah. You know, they, folk become mind readers. Since he thinks or she thinks she's all of that, I'm going to show them. My question is always, how do you know what a person thinks? Amen. Are you Jesus? How do you know what a person thinks? And, and uh, uh, do you think that God has actually anointed you to be the person who brings people down? Oh, I, know that, I know that they call you a bishop, but uh, you'll always just be pat to me. When people do that, that's, that's not, they're not respecting you. That's, that's their way of saying in, in code, you'll never be anything to me other than what you were when you were born. Oh, I know you own your own business now, but, but to me, you just still one of the crowd. You just still one in the number because in my mind, all people are the same. Now, you don't think that. You don't think that when you go to work. You're not going to walk in your boss's office. And, and, and uh, there you are at Research Triangle Park. Oh, no, you're going to walk in and respect the order. You go into the courtroom. Amen. You're going to jail. You're going to jail standing before the judge. Yo. Yo, 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 judge. You talk to the judge. The judge is your boo. You're going to jail. You, you can be innocent, but you're going to jail. For, for disrespecting the process, you're going to jail. Amen. There's always somebody who can, who know uh, the circumstances of your life. Maybe your, your mama or your daddy, maybe your, your, your pedigree is not as impressive as theirs, but God made you somebody. But they always, they're always trying to take you down a notch. That's, this is what was going on. See, I'm not going to, I know he's, I know he's popular. As a matter of fact, he was more popular than Simon. The only reason we know that Simon the Pharisee exists is that Jesus came to his house. The only reason, praise the Lord, like that guy said in that movie, the only reason, the only reason we even know you exist is that Jesus agreed to stop by your house. Had Jesus not stopped by the house of Simon the Pharisee, we wouldn't know him. His claim to fame is Jesus stopped by my house. He will live on in infamy because he didn't treat Jesus right. So what, what brought him, what took him up, brought him down. Because he didn't know how to treat his guests. That's good preaching right there. Are you following me? There's always someone. There'll always be somebody in your life who feels that their calling is to somehow demote you. They can't give you a compliment. It can never give you a naked one. It can never be a compliment. It's got to be, if it's, if it's affirmative, there's got to be at least one sentence in it that that, that takes away, that, that subtracts. That's, this is Simon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the food is good. The food is clean. We're in the courtyard. My garden is nice. The, 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 the table was set properly. The, everything is nice. But certain courtesies that are expected, I'm not going to give them to him, and I'm not even going to bring it up. I'm going to act like what? 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 What is it? Oh, no, no. You know what you should be doing. What? Is not, is not my food good? Have I? Did, didn't I invite you over? Yes, but there are other things that were supposed to have been done. So this man, who the only reason we know his name is that Jesus consented to, to stop by. Now, uh, are you all warm? Is it good in here? You're good? Y'all hot? You good? I can't make up what y'all say. All right. The only reason. All right. All right. All right. 
Let me preach. Let me preach fast. Now, now you listening to me? Because um, uh, 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 so because uh, uh, we've gone through it, and uh, and so when it happens to you again, just say, "Well, it happened to Jesus." So this man patronize, patronizes Jesus. Patronize. I keep saying patronize. Patronizes Jesus. He treats Jesus. The Pharisee is treating the rabbi like the rabbi is inferior. And so Jesus participates, having been slighted, and Jesus doesn't even bring it up. Then comes in a woman. As the Lord is being disrespected. Ladies, are you going to say amen? amen? A woman enters the setting. I, I was uh, you know, thinking the interesting encounters that Jesus had with women in the scripture. He meets the woman at the well. After he finishes just letting her know that he knows who she is. The next thing I hear her doing is running through the streets of the city saying, come see a man. Boy, Jesus Christ, boy, I'll save you somebody. Amen. He meets the widow of Nin and she's crying. He saw her, but she didn't see him. But her tears spoke a language that her, that her voice didn't have to. And he walks up to her uninvited. And says, weep not. So that's, that's kind of man Jesus was. He, he didn't cause the weeping. He said, weep not. And touch the casket. And raise the little boy up and said, here, go home with your mama. Get your job. Take care of her. That's, that was her encounter with Jesus. Mary meets him after Lazarus uh, had died. Mary tells me, had you been here, my brother would have, would have lived. And the Lord says to her, you'll see your brother again. And she says to him, I, I know I'll see him again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus looks at her and says, wait a minute, Mary. I am the resurrection. See, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. Good God Almighty. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And then look at Jesus being the typical male, a problem solver. Said, take me where you've laid it. Typical male. Typical male. Typical male. Women sometimes complain, say, I get tired. You know, sometimes when we tell our husbands stuff, we don't want them to do anything. We just want to vent. We just want them to listen. But it's in a male. Man. When you hear the problem, it's just, oh, it's part of the makeup, especially if he loves you. Now, if you know, if he don't care anything about you now, he might, he might just look at you when you finish crying and say, well, that was a sad story. <laughs> oh, boy. I feel sorry for you, boo. And go on about his business. See, he don't love you. But if he loves you, he's, he's going to want to fix that. Now, he may make things worse. But at least he's going to try. <laughs> say, well, why did you say something? Well, I had to try. Jesus said, take me where you've laid him. And uh, they took Jesus and you know the story. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. What a mighty God. Here this woman walks in. There are some other encounters, but I don't have time to preach them all today. And uh, the scripture tells us that this woman was a sinner. It tells us something interesting. That she was a woman of the city. That's Luke's way of letting us know she had reputation and everyone knew her. A woman of the city, which was a sinner, speaks to also, saints, her occupation. 
the woman of the city was a woman of the red light district. She was a woman of ill repute. She was a prostitute. The prostitute walks in. Remember, the, the custom was that when the rabbi was visiting, anybody could stop by. So as Jesus is being disrespected, a prostitute walks in. God Almighty. And she walks in and the text tells us that she has around her neck, she had a vial which Jewish women wore. A little vial of concentrated perfume. Those, those little vials were called alabasters. A few weeks ago, I preached about another encounter uh, when Mary anointed Jesus, but that was them, um, that was a different setting altogether. That was, that was uh, the last week of, near the last week of Jesus' life, right six days before the uh, Passover. This is a different setting. So this prostitute walks in. Are you with me? Yes, Carrying a little vial called an alabaster box. And uh, when you study this, some say that she was Mary Magdalene, out of whom the Lord cast seven devils. And if you read chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, you see where Mary is mentioned and being a part of the women who followed Jesus. She may have been Mary Magdalene. She may not have been Mary Magdalene. But whomever she was, she was a woman who, when you study the text, who had previously had some kind of encounter with Jesus and she went there with the intention of showing her appreciation for what the Lord had done for her. She went there with the intention of anointing him. She went there with the intention of showing her appreciation. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.